Ever since the financial crisis, um, risk has been at the forefront of a lot of uh, you know, bankers, investors' minds. Mm -hmm. How are um, organizations using data and data analytics to kind of mitigate uh, risk uh, in, in their organizations? Boxy? Um, there are many types of risk, so you have to be very careful about which type you talk to. Um, for instance, operational risk. Um, there are a group of about 60 banks that got together and decided to share operational risk events. It's called ORX. You can read about it. They formed it several years ago. And they're actually putting risk data together in order to help protect the industry. Um, so there are those kinds of examples. Um, there are also, um, you know, from credit risk and financial risk, an awful lot of opportunities, mm -hmm. and I think opportunities for Watson-like mm -hmm. kinds of plays as well, because, again, we have more access to data, more access to events, instantaneous uh, streaming data, and yep. we need to put that together and be smart about it. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Boxy. I mean, risk is a very broad category, obviously. Um, some of the things that we've talked to our customers about for Watson specifically are um, areas like counterparty risk. So given all the financial shocks that have come over the last few years, people are very interested in better understanding um, who's taking credit for them and what the risks might be there. Um, the other area is really around fraud, right? So understanding the patterns of behavior and whatnot um, out there, and particularly in insurance um, where there is potentially fraudulent activity. I would say the same thing. I mean, when it comes to, to, to credit risk, especially, I mean, uh, you can, looking at, uh, banks have a, a unique, obviously, aspect of being able to look at transaction data uh, as well as uh, integrate that social data together. So uh, when you can look at transaction <coughs> trends uh, and, and utilize that with also uh, social media trends and uh, use that in predictive behavior to understand um, when also, not just from even a, a a credit risk perspective, but also a client risk perspective. Is this client, uh, can this be a potential <coughs> risk that I might lose this client based upon uh, types of behavior? Uh, and they can start to, to be a little bit more predictive uh, on that behavior and then therefore be more proactive. What can't um, smarter analytics and, and data, what can't it solve in the banking industry? What are the factors that Watson may not be able to master? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one way I talk about this problem is, you know, Watson isn't a creative engine per se, right? It's not going to fabricate or, or synthesize something that it doesn't already know. So um, to that extent, you know, if you want it to be innovative and, and tell you what the next great product should be, um, you know, we're not going to be able to do that. It's not that predictive in nature. Um, but there's, there's lots of problems out there that Watson is going to go solve that don't require that. Yeah, and, and banking, financial services is still a relationship business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we could certainly free up the majority of the employees who tend to do transactional things to start to do relationship things, and that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So those 60% that are going in the branch mm -hmm. today are still doing a fair amount of transactional work that we'd really like them to be going in and, and developing relationships and finding out about the next product or service or life event going on. So, I, I mean, I think the, the, the humans are in for a while, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Let's hope so. Luckily. Yeah. <laughs>